Uh, yeah, it's definitely an important cause, Nisha. And if you have a profession that requires a lot of talking, I don't know, like me, then your voice might be getting a little tired. Well, Jesse stopped by LDS Hospital to check out their voice clinic. I'm here at the Inner Mountain Voice and Swallowing Center, and I'm so lucky to be joined by Anna Siciliano, who's a speech pathologist here, and also Asha Crandall, who is an actual patient. So thank you guys for being letting us be here, first of all. So I want to know, Asha, tell us a little bit about your background and why you came into the center. Um, I'm a college student. I'm doing my undergrad over at Westminster College. I'm currently a junior, and this summer I went to Italy to sing in an opera out there, and I ended up just exhausting myself um, and came home and didn't feel right vocally. It wasn't My sound wasn't as efficient as it usually is, and I just felt really tired after singing super easy songs. So I Googled the crap out of it and found Anna here and have been seeing her since for about 10 months now almost. Been a while. On and off. Yeah. So Anna, tell us a little bit about what happens when a patient like Asha comes in. What's your first step to kind of figure out what's going on with them and treatment? Well, we get a referral from a physician. That's important. And we have them fill out a uh, quite extensive case history. We like to ask a lot of good questions, find out what brought the voice problem about, um, what they consider, um, how, how much of a problem it is for them, mild, moderate, or severe. We look at what medications they're on, their overall health, um, their vocal hygiene, their sleep patterns, et cetera. We really wanna find out about them as a person. Also, what their functional voice needs are, meaning how much does she sing? How much does she talk? What is her daily schedule like? So we took a very good case history, and then we were able to take a video strobe evaluation with our equipment here where we look directly at the vocal folds. We're very lucky to have this type of equipment. It shows the vocal folds moving in slow motion, so we're really able to get um, a good look at the vocal folds, especially when working with a singer. Um, it's important to see how the muscle is moving. So we determined that she had nodules. They were very, very small. And then we developed a treatment plan for her, and I'm excited to say she's singing really well and the nodules are gone. So Well, so obviously we have an opera singer as a patient. Tell us more about the types of patients you usually see at the Voice and Swallowing Center. Well, we see a variety of types of patients, but teachers are the number one population with voice problems. So we do see a lot of teachers. We see singers. We see people like you that use their voice for their profession. Lately, we've been getting a lot of people that work on, um, on the phone like telephone cells, that's very vocally um, demanding. Really anyone who has a problem with their voice, their breathing, or their swallowing. Well, I want to know, Asha, how have you felt like this treatment has helped you, and is this the first time you've actually come to a speech pathologist? Yeah, this was my first time coming to a speech pathologist. I think as we go through our learning process of becoming a singer, everybody goes through like bumps and bumps and valleys and stuff, but I just, I think that this, for me, was a super severe problem. Um, so, so far my learning process here has been amazing. I've learned tons of stuff about my voice, about speaking, about singing, and Anna's obviously helped me get rid of my notes, so. <laughs> It's oh, well, been super important. That is super important. I mean, you have such a gorgeous voice, so I'm glad everyone is able to still enjoy that and you are able to have that evaluated and treated. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for letting us come in and peek inside <laughs> here today. And we have more information all about this center 